Do I look like I have an eye disease? An eye disease. If I do look like I have an eye disease in this video, at least you can't say that I didn't take a risk. I thought this was going to be an easy video, but as I was researching transmission, this turned into this, which turned into this. Turns out transmission is really messy, so I'm gonna make more than one transmission video, but today I'm gonna to focus on the relationship between cats, fleas, humans, oh, and a lot of flea poop. Transmission of Bartonella is a controversial topic between patients and between researchers. I have spent many, many hours on this topic, and I have done my best to not only select high-quality research, but also to portray that research in the most accurate way possible. When I'm talking about a specific study, a number will come up here indicating which article I'm talking about, and then you can check it out in the video description box. Most of this video focuses on Bartonella Hensley, as it is the predominant cause of cat scratch disease and, therefore, is the most researched. Cat scratch disease, as its name implies, is transmitted through a cat scratch, but it's a little bit more complicated than this. Bartonella is actually transmitted through a cat scratch when a cat has flea feces under its nails and it scratches the host and the flea feces gain access to the bloodstream. Flea feces are also sometimes called flea dirt, which I don't know why it's called flea dirt because flea feces is way better because it has alliteration and assonance. Assonance, noun. A relatively close juxtaposition of similar sounds, especially of vowels, as in, rise high in the bright sky. Okay, I just looked it up and it's called flea dirt because I guess when it dries and you brush your pet, it comes off and it looks like dirt. Oh, and this article says that they are small dark pellets of dried blood, which makes sense because fleas eat blood. Bartonella hensley is the most common species that causes cat scratch disease, but Bartonella clerigiae, I think that's how you pronounce it, has been known to cause cat scratch disease and has been found in cat fleas and in cat blood. In a case report from 1997, a veterinarian was bitten by his flea-infested kitten, that rhymes, and he developed typical cat scratch disease. I'm not happy about the cat scratch disease, I'm just happy about the rhyming. <laughs> However, he was not seroreactive to Bartonella hensley antigens, but he was seroreactive to the isolate obtained from his cat. Researchers sequenced his isolate and identified the species as Bartonella clerigiae, and this was the first reported case of typical cat scratch disease caused by this species. We know that a certain subset of cat scratch disease patients test negative on IFA tests, and the authors hypothesized that this part could be due to some people being infected by Bartonella clerigiae, and testing negative on a serological test that uses Bartonella hensley as the antigen. From this case report, you can see that cats get flea feces, and therefore Bartonella, in their mouths, and can transmit it to a human through a bite or through licking an open wound. So not only is it important to avoid animal bites and scratches in the first place, if you do experience an animal bite or scratch, it's important to wash the wound thoroughly with water and soap. Most people say soap and Water. But the next question is, do fleas only transmit Bartonella through their feces, or do they transmit it through their bite or other mechanisms? Not all pathogens transmitted by fleas are transmitted in the same way. For example, the pathogen known as the flea tapeworm is transmitted to humans when they ingest an infected flea. So this more often happens in children than adults. Why? Um, lol, because uh, kids eat more fleas than adults. Yersinia pestis, the bacteria that causes plague, multiplies in the upper part of the flea's GI system until that area is blocked by bacteria, and then the flea regurgitates the bacteria into the host when it tries to feed. The question of whether fleas can transmit Bartonella directly to humans through their bite is not settled. According to a paper published in 2006, it has not yet been proven experimentally that fleas can transmit Bartonella whether through their feces getting into the flea bite or directly through the flea salivary gland to humans. So let's first talk about flea feces getting into the flea bite and talk about the salivary gland second. We already know how humans become infected with Bartonella quintana, the species that causes trench fever. Humans become infected when a bite from the human body louse gets inoculated with louse feces. Louse is the singular of lice. When dealing with transmission, it's all about possibility versus probability. Is it possible that Prince Charming will knock on my door professing his love to me? Sure, almost anything is possible, but is it probable? You 
can be my Prince Charming. So, in my opinion, it seems probable that fleas can directly transmit Bartonella to humans when flea feces get into the flea bite. Fun fact, fleas and lice take a fat dump right after they bite you. So now let's address what the research says about human infection via the flea's salivary gland. Scientists in Germany in 1962 showed that Bartonella gramii was transmitted to bank voles, a type of small rodent. How cute is that? No, seriously, how cute is that? Through the flea feces, but not through the flea salivary gland. However, in a 2013 study, researchers fed fleas infected blood to investigate whether they can transmit Bartonella by regurgitating during the blood meal. Mom, ask me where the researchers got these fleas. Where did the researchers get the fleas? They got them at the flea market. But um, shh. How they did this was they fed the fleas infected blood for days one and two. Then, on days three, four, and five, they fed the fleas uninfected blood. Each day, they changed out the feeder and cleaned it. When they tested the blood in the feeder on days three, four, and five, after the fleas had fed, they found that there was Bartonella DNA in all three blood samples, which indicated that the fleas were regurgitating Bartonella into the uninfected blood in the feeder. As a control, they fed a second group of fleas blood with dead Bartonella bacteria in it for the first two days, and then they fed them uninfected blood on days three, four, and five. No Bartonella DNA was found in the blood samples from days three to five from the control group, which according to the authors shows that the regurgitation of Bartonella by the cat flea occurs only with living bacteria. The truth is we don't know for sure whether or not Bartonella is transmitted directly through the flea's salivary gland when biting humans. But what we do know is that Bartonella multiplies in the flea's gut. Now, what about ingestion of fleas and their feces? In 1998, scientists injected 45 milligrams of flea feces from Bartonella hensley exposed fleas into the skin of five cats. They fed a second group of five cats 50 fleas that had been exposed to Bartonella hensley and 45 milligrams of fresh flea feces from fleas that had been exposed to Bartonella hensley Feces! Get your fresh feces here! The fleas and the feces were suspended in tuna oil so that the cats would eat it. All five cats that were injected with flea feces became bacteremic, while none of the cats that were fed the feces and the fleas became bacteremic. These cats were four to seven months old. However, a 1999 study inoculated five kittens with Bartonella that had been grown in a lab as opposed to using fleas and their feces. Three kittens were five days old when they received the inoculation, and two kittens were two weeks old. The three younger kittens received a larger amount of bacteria than the two older kittens. All three of the younger kittens became bacteremic with Bartonella, and only one of the two older kittens became bacteremic. The authors surmised that perhaps one didn't become bacteremic with Bartonella because the Bartonella got killed in the GI tract. There are many explanations for these disparate findings proposed by the authors. Number one, perhaps the tuna oil had some sort of antibacterial activity, but the fleas and their feces were suspended in the tuna oil for less than one minute, so the authors found this explanation to be unlikely. Number two, Age of the kittens and cats. The kittens that became infected were really young. They were five days and two weeks old, while the cats that didn't become infected were four to seven months old. Number three, rather than the age directly, perhaps these disparate findings are influenced by the size of the inoculum versus the size of the cat, which is influenced by age. I am not equipped, nor do I have any interest in figuring out if 10 to the seven or 10 to the nine for two week old or five day old cats is comparable to 50 fleas and 45 milligrams of feces for four to seven month old cats. To my knowledge, there aren't any additional studies on this method of transmission to cats, and feeding infected fleas and their feces to humans would be unethical. Clearly more research on this method of transmission should be done, but in the meantime, you shouldn't be eating fleas, don't drink your cat's blood, don't become blood brothers with your cat, don't become blood brothers with anyone. So that was Transmission 101 on how Bartonella is transmitted from cats and fleas to humans. Obviously, these are not the only routes of transmission. This information does not address all species of Bartonella, it only addresses one type of arthropod, the common cat flea, and it does not address transmission in the absence of arthropods. To learn about all of that, you'll have to stay tuned to my channel, and the best way to do that is to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching! Guess how cold we had to make it in this house for me to film in this. 68 degrees. 68 degrees. I've got my long underwear on. Do you really? No. <laughs> it's important to wash the wound. 
Whoosh the wound. So not only is it important to avoid animal bite 